Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to Jesus. Amen and amen. Are you ready for God's word? Lift up both hands wherever you are. Say, Father, tonight I'm ready for your word. I receive your word. And I walk in faithfulness with your, to your word. I bear fruit in every aspect of my life. I am a doer of the word. In Jesus' name, put your hands together. Glory be to God. Will you please take your seat in the house of the Lord? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. We've been talking about how to put your faith to work for you. Amen. We said that just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. And he said, be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. The just shall live by his faith. So there are two meaning to this scripture. The other one says, the just shall live by faith. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, he says, the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. And then we see in Matthew 9, 29, the Bible says, be it unto you according to your faith. So we've gone through the word of God and we've established the fact that God wants us to do well in our lives. God wants us to flourish. God wants us to excel. God wants us to do great things. And in order for us to do great things and excel in life, we cannot please God without faith and it's not possible without faith praise God and so as a child of God the most important thing in your life is to learn to walk with God and to walk by faith we've seen the benefits of walking by faith we said every believer already has faith you are I have faith say I have the faith of God and we also saw that faith can be measured, can be measurable, and can be quantified. We saw weak faith, we saw little faith, we saw great faith, we saw strong faith. And then we saw full faith, we saw exceedingly growing faith. So every child of God, you can grow in faith. And God wants us to grow in faith. If you have little faith, you must grow to great faith. If you have weak faith, you must grow to strong faith. Whichever level of faith you are operating in at this level of your Christian life, God wants you to move to another level of faith. The Bible makes us understand we grow from faith to faith. So God wants every believer to grow in faith. God wants you to exercise your faith. How do we grow in faith? We said we do not grow in faith by prayer. We grow in faith by receiving the word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh. In other words, it's not one time incident. It's not one time event. It is a continuous event. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. And then we also said that you must exercise your faith. You must put your faith into action. You must learn to start from where you are. You must believe God for little things. And then you must move on from believing God for little things to believing God for greater things. You must put your faith into action. We said every believer has faith. And we need to put our faith into action. We need to exercise our faith. We need to trade with our faith. Our faith is like the talent that the servant received from their Lord. He said a certain man called his servant and he gave them talent. And he went to a faraway country. And he told them, occupy till I come. When he returned, they were assembled to render account. And one of them said, I have multiplied the talent you give me to be five talents. Another said, I've multiplied the talent you give me to be ten talents. And then the other person came and said, I have hidden the talent you give me. Our faith is like talent we have received. He said, we have received the measure of faith. And if we have received the measure of faith, we need to put our faith into action. 
so that that measure of faith we have received it would move to another level. We will be able to become great faith. We will be able to become strong faith. We will be able to become exceedingly growing faith. Praise God. Glory be to God. Now, if we are going to exercise our faith and grow in faith and see exploits in our lives, we need to maintain a balance between confession, between our speaking, between first our believing, our speaking, and our action. Faith is in different aspects. There is the believing aspect of faith. There is the speaking aspect of faith. And there is the action aspect of faith. We can tell that a person is walking by faith or a person is living by faith based on certain parameters. The first one is believing. Every, we must maintain a balance between our believing and then our confession and then our action. If we are going to see our faith work for us and if we are going to put our faith to work, we must know that there is a believing aspect of faith. Believing is not faith. Believing alone is not faith. A lot of believers think that when you believe, you have faith. Believing alone is not faith. You don't just have to believe. You must move from believing to actually acting on what you believe. So there is the believing aspect of faith. Now what is believe? When we say believing something, what does it mean? Believing means you have a conviction in your heart. You have a persuasion in your heart. The Bible says, and Abraham was fully persuaded. Believing means to be persuaded. Believing also means to have an assurance or confidence in God and in his word in your heart. So believing, there is a believing aspect of faith. And you must maintain a balance between the believing aspect of faith and then your confession and then your action. So believing alone is not faith. Somebody says, I believe. Believing alone is not faith. When you read the Bible, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 10, the Bible makes us to understand. What say thou? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth. Even the word of faith which is in your heart. The word of faith which we preach. Then the Bible says, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You believe in your heart. Faith is of the heart. Faith is not the mind. Faith is not the feelings. Faith is of your heart. He said, if you believe with your heart, then he said, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So, believing is of the heart. Believing is not of the mind. Believing is not of your, of your flesh. Believing is of your heart. Believing is of your heart. So, there must be the believing aspect of your faith. To believe means to have a strong conviction about something, about someone. To believe means to be fully persuaded about something and about someone. So you are convinced in your heart. It also means to have a confidence about something and about the word of God in your heart. So there's the believing aspect. Mark, Mark chapter 11 verse 23. 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 He said, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, shall not doubt in his heart, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. He says, shall not doubt in his heart, shall not doubt in his heart. Faith is of the heart. Faith is not of the mind. Faith is not of your feelings. Faith is of the heart. Therefore, what is faith? Faith means believing something to be true. Faith means, as, uh, f believing means accepting something to be true. If they say you believe something, it means you accept that thing to be true. So if I believe something, I accept that thing to be true in my heart. I have conviction in my heart about that thing and about that person. Believing means I am persuaded in my heart about something, about what God has said, about what God has done, about what God says he will do. It means I am fully persuaded. The Bible says Abraham was fully persuaded. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, being fully persuaded that he who has promised is also able to do it. So faith means I am fully persuaded. I am convinced beyond every reasonable doubt, beyond every shadow of doubt. I am convinced that what God says he will do, he will do. I am convinced that what God says he has done, he has done. I am convinced that what God said he has finished, he has finished. I accept to be true in my heart 
that Christ died for me. He rose for me on the third day. I accept it to be true. I am fully persuaded about it. I am fully persuaded about the finished work of Christ. I am fully persuaded about God's plans and purposes for my life. I am fully persuaded. I am convinced. I accept to be true that I am blessed. I accept to be true that I am anointed of the Lord. I accept to be true that there are angels around me. I may not see angels, but in my heart, I have settled it. I accept to be true that the angels of the Lord, they encamped around me to deliver me from all my troubles. I accept to be true in my heart that he shall keep his angels charge over me. So when I am moving, may, I may not see the angels, but I accept to be true that angels are around me. I accept to be true that I am not alone. So believing means I accept something to be true. Though I may not see it, though I may not feel it in my physical body, but I, I, I accept to be true in my heart. Faith is of the heart. Faith is not of the mind. Faith is not of the flesh. Faith is of the heart. With the heart a man believes and shall not doubt in his heart. With the heart a man believes. So if you believe, you believe in your heart. You accept to be true in your heart. You are convinced in your heart. You are fully persuaded in your heart that I am the head and not the tail. I accept it in my heart. It's not based on what is around me. It's not based on my past records. It's not based on what they are saying about me, but it is based on the word of God, which I have accepted to be true in my heart. Praise God. Glory be to Jesus. Now, let me give you an illustration. Believing alone is not faith. For instance, if you are, you are hungry and you are very famished and something is about to happen to you and there is food served on the table and they ask you, do you believe that when you eat this food, you will be stronger and healthy? And say, yes, when I eat the food, I know I'll be strong. I believe when I eat the food, I'll be strong. You can keep saying, I believe when I eat the food, I'll be strong. You can keep saying, and by the time you realize, you collapse. Because that is not faith. That is just saying, I believe. So believing alone is not faith. In the same way, somebody may be sick. And then they'll tell them, do you believe that the medicine in this bottle can cure you? And the person will say, yes, I believe. The medicine in this bottle can cure me. The medicine in this bottle can cure me. If the person does not take the medicine to be cured, the person will keep saying, I believe, I believe. You may believe in your heart. You may accept it to be true in your heart. You may speak it with your mouth. But until you drink the medicine to cure you, you have not exercised your faith. Faith without works is dead. Even the devil believes and he trembles. So believing alone is not faith. How come the devil believes but he's not born again? Because believing alone is not faith. So a lot of Christians believe, but they don't walk by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the elders obtain good report. So you can be believing. You can believe I'm blessed and you can confess I'm blessed and nothing will happen in your life until you rise up and do the things that somebody who is blessed must do. Are you here with me? You can say, I believe Jesus died for me. You can say and believe, say, I believe in my heart. But until you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you cannot be saved. So you see, believing in itself is not faith. Because James chapter 2 verse 19 says, the devil believes and he trembles. How can the devil is not saved? How can the devil is not born again? Are you here with me? So believing alone is not faith. I believe I shall be great. I believe I shall be great. No. What pragmatic steps are we taking? to ensure that we shall be great. So there is the believing aspect of faith and there is the confessing aspect of faith and there is the action aspect of faith. In the same way, you can have your car with your car key and you say, I believe this car can take me everywhere I want to go. I believe this car can take me everywhere I want to go. And you can actually hold the car key and you'll be shaking the car key like this. I believe. But until you sit in the car, spark the car and drive to your destination, you will stay where you are forever and the car will not move an inch. It's not because the car cannot move. It's not because you did not believe. You did not act on what you believed. So believing alone is not faith. Are you here with me? So there is the believing aspect of faith and there's the confession aspect of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Most believers have said they believe, they believe, and nothing has come out of their life. They have said they believe, and they have not moved an inch. They've not moved to their promised land. Because they sit down, do nothing, and all they keep saying is, I believe, I believe. I believe alone is not faith. I believe alone is not faith. But I believe it's the backbone. I believe it's the beginning. I believe it's what moves you, propels you on. I believe it's necessary. 
Then we have the confession aspect. He said, we having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, he said, I have believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. You, you don't end with believing. When you believe, you speak. I believe God raised Jesus from the dead. I believe in my heart. Therefore, I confess with my mouth and I am saved. That is the operation of faith. You don't just say, I believe. You must open your mouth and speak it. He said, I believed. Therefore, I have spoken. We also believe. Therefore, we speak. When you believe, you speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I cannot know what is in your heart until I hear you speaking. If you do not speak, I will not know there is faith in your heart. He said, who is it? He, he said, who, whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And he shall not doubt in his heart the things which he says. So, you know, the same aspect of faith is very important. He said, ah, there is a life and death is in the power of the tongue. You must say it. If you believe it, you must say it. You must say, I'm blessed. You must say, God is on my side. You must say, good things are working for me. You must say, I'm moving to my next level. You must say, favor is locating me. Doors are opening for me. You must open your mouth and say, I shall not die before my time. You must open your mouth and say, my hands are blessed. Whatever I touch shall be blessed. You must open your mouth and say, I'm coming out of this limitation. You must open your mouth and say, doors are opening for me. You must open your mouth and say, my sons and daughters are coming forth. You must open your mouth and say, my destiny helpers are coming forth. Listen, if you believe, you speak. He said, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. We have also believed, therefore we speak. Speak it. If you believe, you do what? You speak it. If you believe, you do what? You speak it. If you believe, you do what? You speak it. So anything you believe in your heart, anything you have accepted that Christ has done for you, the finished work of Christ, what Christ has done for you on the cross, what your life will become. Listen carefully. If you believe in your heart, you must speak it. I am a global champion. I speak it. We are a global church. I speak it. We are a mega church. I speak it. I believe it. Therefore, I have spoken. We also believe it. Therefore, we speak. Oh, come on. I believe in 50,000. Therefore, I have spoken. Listen, anything you believe, you must do what? You must speak. Are you here with me? I shall not beg. Even if you are begging, you must speak and say, I shall not beg. If I believe, I speak. Are you here with me? I shall learn to nations. How it will happen is not your business. You, if you believe it, you must do what? You must speak it. I have been young, now I'm old. Yet have I seen the righteous forsaken. No, he's still begging for bread. I shall not be forsaken and my seed shall not beg for bread. If you believe it, you do what? You speak it. This thing I'm involved in is working. It's increasing. It's multiplying. I'm hearing testimonies. Signs and wonders are following. Goodness and messages are following. If you believe in your heart, you speak it. If you believe you are blessed, you speak blessings. If you believe God, Christ has finished this work for you, you speak health. Listen, speak. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. If you believe it in your heart, you speak good things. You speak expected end. You speak good things. Are you here with me? If you believe it in your heart, you do what? You speak it. If you believe it in your heart, you do what? You speak it. Don't bother yourself. What if I speak and it doesn't happen? Well, who, how will it happen? Who will help me? No, 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 no. My sons and daughters are gathering. They are married. They say, I will not. I shall have it. The children, they say, I shall not carry. I shall carry them. I believe it, therefore I do what? I speak. If you believe it, you do what? You speak. This school you have started, you will finish and complete. You shall complete with flying colors. You shall finish in a grand style. You believe it, therefore you do what? You speak. Anything you believe, this house shall be filled and it shall overflow and we shall run multiple services and this place shall be a place of solution. This place shall be a place of destiny transformation. Nations, men and women will gather here and their lives shall be turned around. In the name of Jesus, I believe it, therefore I have spoken. You also believe it, therefore you do what? You speak. Champions are gathered in this house. Listen, great men and women are gathered in this place. Men of influence, men of affluence. Listen, apostles and prophets are gathered in this place. 
evangelists and pastors and teachers are gathered in this place. Owners of businesses, owners of properties, owners of houses, owners of ministries, owners of, let me tell you, owners of institutions, they are gathered in this place. Owners of hospitals, I believe it, therefore, I have spoken. You also believe it, therefore, you do what? You speak. He said, say to the righteous, it shall be well with you, and you shall eat the fruit of your labor. I don't need to know your bank account. All I need to know is that you are righteous. You are born again. So I speak to you that it shall be well with you. There shall be no weeping in your home. There shall be no mourning in your home. You shall not bury your husband, and you shall not bury your wife. You shall not bury your little children. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You shall move from strength to strength. I believe it, therefore, I have spoken. You also believe it, therefore, you speak. You will not die in that family house. You will not die a failure. And you will not die a non-achiever. You will not go backward in life. You will only go forward and forward and forward and forward. I believe it, therefore, I have spoken. You also believe it, and therefore, you do what? You speak. A lot of people have been defeated in the speaking aspect. It's not because you did not believe. You see, the proportion of believing to speaking is one into three. The proportion of believing and speaking is actually one is to three. When you believe, you believe once, you speak three times. When you believe, you believe once, you speak multiple times. So most Christians, when they believe, they walk quiet and they keep they keep their mouth shut. No, when you keep your mouth shut, you are keeping your blessings shut. You are keeping your promotion shut. You are keeping your helpers shut. Open your mouth wide and I will fail it. Out of a man's belly, is a man's lips, through the lips of a man, he shall fill his belly. Listen, he said, thou art ensnared by the words of your mouth. If you believe it, you will speak it. In this place, we shall have mass weddings, mass dedications of babies, mass dedication of properties. I believe it, therefore, I have spoken. You also believe it, therefore, you do what? Most of us have been defeated in the words of our mouth. Mark 11, verse 23. One day, Reverend Kenneth Hicken of blessed memory, he said he read the word of God and God told him, he said, listen carefully. I'm going to show you from the, something from the Bible. And he said, God, I've read the Bible, New Testament, 150 times. He said, I've read it 150 times. He said, I'm going to show you something from the Bible. I've read it 150 times. He said, go to Mark 11, 23. He said, look at the proportion between, the ratio between speaking and believing. Let's look at it. He said, for verily I say unto you, omit the first say. Verily I say unto you, omit the first say. He said, that whosoever shall say, say number one. Whosoever shall say, Unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, number two, can you see? Those things which he did what? Number two, he shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Are you here with me? He said, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, number one, he said, and he shall not doubt in his heart. So you see, believing is once, but saying is plenty, continuous. Listen, you don't even know when the miracle will surface in the physical, but all you need to do is you must maintain your confession. You must do what? You must do what? And that's how to put your faith into action. You believe in your heart, and then you maintain your confession. You maintain your confession. Most of the time, we are defeated by the words of our mouth. We are defeated by the words of our mouth. Why am I suffering like this? Nothing is working for me. I'm behind. Nothing seems to work. Everything is going down. Everything is scattering. And you say, as you say it, so shall you see it. As you say it, so shall you see it. What you say is what you will see. I say, what you say is what you will see. I'm broke. I'm suffering. Nothing is working. I'm behind in life. Everybody is overtaking me. What you say is what you will see. I have believed it, therefore have I spoken. We also believe it, therefore we speak. So faith has the believing part. And it has the speaking part. And then it has the action part. Genesis chapter 12 verse 4. It has the action part. Great men and women are rising from this place. Whatever you have lost shall be restored unto you. 
whatever has been stolen away from you shall be brought back. Your enemies are scattering before you. What they say you can't do, you will do and do more. What they say you can't have, you shall have and have more. Where they say you cannot reach, you will get there and go beyond. The limitation upon the family cannot stop you. The limitation upon your city cannot stop you. You are breaking the limitation. You are breaking the barriers. You are rising to your place God has prepared for you. In the name of Jesus. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. So Abraham departed. You know, that is action. God told Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your country, leave your kinsmen, and go to a land where I will show you. Abraham did not say, I am leaving my father's house. I am leaving my father's house. I am leaving my father's house. No. Abraham believed in his heart, and Abraham actually departed. That is an action word. So there is an action part of faith, and Abraham departed. Luke chapter 5 verse 20. Abraham departed. Oh, yes, I believe that all things are possible. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe that all things. that has been messed up in your life shall be beautified. In his own time, he makes all things beautiful. I believe my life is being beautified from glory to glory. From favor to favor. Yes, from victory to victory. In the name of Jesus. In the word of God I have given up on, I'm going back to believe again. I'm going back to believe again. I'm going back to speak again. I'm going back to act upon it again. I'm going back to take my blessing. I'm going back to, to believe the promises. shall be the first. You shall come from the bottom to the top. Whatever was scattered shall be gathered together again for you. I believe I'm moving from behind and I'm getting to the front. I believe I believe I'm coming out of obscurity to the limelight. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe that the same place where I fell, I shall rise and stand again. I believe, I believe the same place where I fail, this time I'm going to win. I believe the same exam that I wrote, that I failed the exams. I'm going to write that same exam again. I believe, I believe. I believe the well I dug, that they blocked the well. I'm going back to dig that well again. I'm going back to dig that well again. I'm digging back that well again. I'm taking back that well again. The beautiful relationships that the Lord gave to me, that the devil came to swell, the Lord is restoring those relationships. He's restoring those relationships. I'm going back to those relationships. I'm going back to those relationships. The projects I started, the projects I began, the projects I began, the projects I began, which the money ran out, where I came to a standstill, I'm going back to finish that project. I'm going back to finish that project. I'm going back to finish that project. The ministry God called me to pursue. The ministry, the ministry. That anointing, that calling. That ministry which I have given up on. That ministry which I have fought and I'm tired. That ministry which I says cannot be fulfilled anymore. I'm going back to fulfill. I'm going back to pursue that ministry again. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going back to pursue. I'm going back to pursue. I'm going back to pursue. Those enemies I fled away from. Those enemies I fled away from. Those enemies I fled away from. I'm going back again. I'm going back again. I'm going back again. I'm going back again. I'm going to confront those enemies. And I know I'm coming out victoriously. I know I'm fighting a good fight of faith. 
I know by faith I'm standing. I know this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. I said, don't write me off. Don't write me off. I might be down, but I'm not out of the game. I'm still in the game. I'm still in the game. Don't write me out. Don't write me out. I might have gone down, but I'm not out of the game. I'm going to press on. 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 What they say I can't do, I will do. What they say I can't do, I will do. What they say I can't become, I will become. What they say I can't become. When they say I won't get to us, I get there and go beyond. When they say I cannot touch, I will touch. When they say I won't enjoy, I will enjoy. I shall enjoy the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, in the land of the living, where there is no hope, hope is coming again. Where there is no hope, hope is coming again. Where there is no hope, hope is coming again. Where there is no hope, hope is coming again. Hope is coming again. Hope is coming again. Hope is coming again. I can do all things. Hope is coming again. We believe. Yes, we believe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are coming from behind to the front. We are coming from obscurity. A place where we've been put in obscurity. We are coming out to the limelight. We are doing what God says we would do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Well, Luke chapter 5 verse 20. Luke chapter 5 verse 20. Luke chapter 5 verse 20. Look at this one. You are, you are a student of English. And when he saw their faith, when he saw their faith, faith in action, when Jesus saw their faith, faith, we said faith is in the heart and also speaking. But here the Bible says when he saw their faith, because they did something, when he saw their actions corresponding to faith, so when he saw their faith, there is the action part of faith. Let me give you an example of the action part of faith. There's a man called Blind Bartimaeus. Look at the action part of faith. Blind Bartimaeus was blind. And he heard about Jesus. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he heard about Jesus. And because he had faith, he went to where Jesus was and he shouted. And some people around him told him, keep quiet. He won't listen to you. But he shouted them all. And when he shouted them all, Jesus heard him. And Jesus said, bring him. The same people who told him, shut up, were the same people who said, he's calling you. Now, when blind Bartimaeus was going towards Jesus, he had a multicolored attire, a, a custom-made attire for blind people. Because in those days, they had donkeys and they had camels and horses which were moving on the street. So if you were a blind person crossing, the donkeys and the, and, and, the, and the camels and those horses were going to trample on you. And so they often had a custom-made attire for blind people. So blind Bartimaeus was wearing the same attire, which was custom-made for blind people, so that horses and camels would not tread on them or tread, 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 tread upon them. So when Jesus called blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus took his dress and threw it away. Now, in other words, he acted upon his faith. He knew that that was the day for his salvation. That was the day for his healing. That was the day for his miracle. So he told himself, I don't need this garment again. He took the garment and he threw it away. In other words, I'm going to receive my sign. That is an action of faith. Now, this man was actually paralyzed. This man was put on a stretcher. And Jesus was having a miracle service. And the room was full. The whole place was packed. And then these people actually could not go through the door. So they opened the top of the roof. They opened the ceiling. And they lowered the man into the building. And the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. Through the consent of the man, his friends and relatives lowered the roof and they brought him in. That is called faith in action. So faith is believing, speaking, and acting. But I want you to know something. I want to just share with you how you can maintain your believing aspect of your life. What you believe determines how you behave. What you de believe determines what you speak. And what you speak determines what will happen for you. So believing is very important. In fact, what you hear determines what you believe. And what you believe determines how you behave. And how you behave determines what you become. So it starts from hearing and it also believing. Praise God. Listen, what you believe is very important. 
What you believe is very important. And sometimes the enemy will try to attack our faith at the believing point. Sometimes circumstances will happen and what you believe, you will not believe again. You will not believe you become the person God wants you to be again. Sometimes you even begin to doubt. Am I really a child of God? If I'm a child of God, why are things happening to me like this? If, I, if I'm a child of God, why am I going through this hardship? You know, sometimes, let me tell you, even when it comes to things that run through our families, sometimes you can look at the pattern. You can look at your father. You can look at your grandfather. You can look at your uncles, your aunties, even some of them who serve the Lord. And you can see the same pattern going through their lives. And you tell yourself, ah, this thing, cry, will it work? If I look at everything, I don't even believe again. I don't believe again. You know, so circumstances can fight what you are believing. Sometimes you'll be believing, you'll be praying for something. And the thing will not be happening. Sometimes human beings will do things to you. And it will change what you believe. And listen, when you stop believing, you begin to die. When you stop believing, you begin to actually behave in a very negative way. Everything is determined by what we hear and what we believe. When you believe right, you act right. When you believe right, you live right. When you believe right, you confess right. So what we believe is very important. And the enemy will try. Let, let me tell you something. Sometimes things can be difficult for a child of God. Sometimes a child of God will be struggling with certain sinful habits. And begin to begin. Ah, I don't believe I'm really born again. I don't believe the Holy Ghost is in me. If the Holy Ghost is with me. If I'm still anointed. Why are these things happening to me? The devil wants to fight your believing. That is how he defeats us in our lives. But I'm going to show you how you can hold fast to what you believe in. Are you here with me? Look, look, look at how, what you must do. Number one, you must guard your heart. Guard your heart. Tell somebody, guard your heart. We said faith, we said believing is of the heart. Believing is not of the mind. Believing is not of the flesh. Believing is of the heart. If believing is of the heart, then I must guard my heart so that my heart will not depart away from the Lord. Because believing is of the heart. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. He said, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes all the issues of life. So keep your heart, protect your heart, guard your heart. He said, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. If you don't protect your heart, somebody will cause you to, 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 to be offended. Somebody will let you be, harbor unforgiveness. Somebody will cause you to harbor offenses in your heart. Sin of the heart. Last, so he said, protect your heart. Because everything, all the show starts from the heart. The breakthrough, the favor, the abundance, it all starts from the heart. Your promotion starts from the heart. Your victory starts from the heart. Because the word of God in your heart is what will determine what happens. And so the devil knows it. So he will try to fight what we have in our heart. So the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes the... So number one, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Don't let your heart be offended. Don't let anybody spoil your heart. Don't let any situation spoil your heart. Guard your heart. If you can live a victorious life and you can maintain the believing part of your faith life, you must guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Tell somebody, guard your heart. Tell another person, guard your heart. Hebrews chapter 3. Guard your heart. Hey, guard your heart. Oh. Don't let anybody toy with your heart. Don't let any situation toy with your heart. Guard your heart. Things that will make you not believe in God Things that will make you not believe in his promises. Guard your heart. Guard, guard your heart. Listen, sometimes, even when you help people, sometimes you love people, sometimes you do things for people, and they will pay you back with evil. And if you are not careful, this your beautiful heart will be contaminated. But listen carefully. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Some of us, we've gone through certain experiences that has actually subtly affected our heart. Guard your heart. If you can walk with God and be successful, guard your heart. The devil is after you. And the way he will come after you is through your heart. So the Bible says, guard your heart. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Let's read from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 8. Look at this. It says, harden not your heart. Because faith is of the heart. He said, harden not your heart. As in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. He said, harden not your heart. Continue for me. Uh-huh. Harden not your heart. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. Last week we said it. They saw the miracles. They were delivered from Egypt. Yet they, they, they did not guard their heart. And they tempted God. 
God is telling us we should guard our hearts. Continue. He said, when your father's time, he said, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart. They do always err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Guard your heart. So they make mistakes in their heart. Continue. So I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. They shall not enter. Take heed, brethren. Look at this scripture. He said, take heed. That means be careful. Be careful, brethren. He said, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. Departing from the living God. An evil heart of unbelief. So when you, your heart is full of unbelief, unbelief is called evil. He said, listen, be careful. Christians, be careful. Children of God, be careful. Or else your heart will be filled with unbelief and cause it an evil heart of unbelief. Now when there is unbelief, what happens is that you depart from the living God. When there is unbelief, you depart from, you stop believing God. You stop believing what he will do with your life. You stop believing in churches. You stop believing in pastors. You stop believing in serving the Lord. He said, be careful, brethren, because the, the devil wants you to conceive an evil heart of unbelief. He said, departing from the living God. Anytime we, we, our hearts are filled with unbelief, we depart from the living God. Departing from the living God. Departing from the living God. So guard your heart. Tell somebody, guard your heart. He said, or else you, you will find in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. That's why you need to read the word. That's why you need to listen to messages. That's why you need to listen to read books on faith. Read the Bible. Read, listen to messages so that your heart will not conceive unbelief. Anytime there's unbelief will make you depart from the Lord. Departing from the living God. You don't believe anything again. You don't believe things will work again. You don't believe your husband will come. You don't believe your wife will come. You don't believe your children will come. You don't believe you will fulfill your ministry. You don't believe the 50,000 will happen. You don't believe all the things. He said an evil heart of unbelief. It makes you depart from the living God. It makes you depart from your ministry. It makes you depart from your assignment. It makes you, it's an evil heart of unbelief. It makes you depart from the rhema you have received. The rhema, the prophetic word. An evil heart of unbelief. So guard your heart. Don't let anybody toy with your heart. Don't let anybody poison your heart. Don't let any situation destroy your heart. So guard your heart. It's an evil heart of unbelief. You will depart from the living God. Be, be, be guard your heart. Number two, what must you do? Number two, what must you do? Number two, what must you do? When you guard your heart, you must be careful what you listen to. Don't listen to contrary reports. Don't listen to lies. Don't listen to words that says you won't become, you won't have it, you won't do. Don't listen to them. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Tell somebody, guard your heart. Tell another person, guard your heart. Number two, remind yourself of God's promises. Remind yourself of God's Listen, if you want to hold fast to what you believe, remind yourself of God's promises. Every promise God has given to you. Listen, have a book. Whenever God gives you a promise, write it down. Have a book. Whenever God gives you a promise, write it down. Whenever God speaks to you through his word, whenever God speaks to you through his word, whenever God speaks to you through the preaching and the teaching, whenever God speaks to you through prophetic utterance, which is consistent with his word, and it's a personal rhema word, write it down. And let me tell you, to, be, to keep believing the things God has told you, you must always remind yourself of what God has been telling you. You must remind yourself. Hebrews 10, 23, faithful is he who has promised. Faithful is he who has promised. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Faithful is who has promised, who will also do it. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and will he not do it? Has he promised and will he not make it good? Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 God is not a man. Listen, always have a book where you write the things God has told you and always remind yourself of these things. Guard your heart and remind yourself of what God has told you. Are you here with me? Praise God. Are you, are you, are you hear, hearing something at all? Number three. Rehearse your past victories in Christ. Rehearse your past victories in Christ. Listen, you must keep believing what God has said. You must hold fast what you believe in Christ. How do you do it? Guard your heart, number one. Number two, what do you do? You must remind yourself of the promises of God. Of the promises of God. Number three, what do you do? Rehearse past victories. Rehearse your past victories. What God has done for you before. Rehearse it. 
The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 30, it says, He whom he predestined, he called. And he whom he called, he justified. And those whom he justified, he will glorify. So if you have been called, you have been justified. That means you will be glorified. It's a matter of time. So you need to rehearse past victories. God who called me when I was an unbeliever. God who saved me when I was a sinner. Now I am, a, I am, I am saved by grace. God who called me when I was in the world. And this same God has justified me. He says he will glorify me. So I must rehearse my past victory. Now God, if the Lord has done something for me before, he will do it again. Faithful is he who has promised, who would also do it. Are you here with me? He who has begun a good thing in your life, he will bring it to completion. Rehearse past victories like David did. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. David said, If the Lord has done something in my life before, he will do it again. So I will keep believing him for what he says he will do. Are you here with me? I will guard my heart. I will remind myself of God's promises. And I will rehearse my past victories. If the Lord did for me in this point, at that point, the Lord took me through that SSS, he will, took me, he will take me through the university. If the Lord helped me to finish that project, he will help me to finish this one. If the Lord gave us Zion, he will give us another place. If the Lord, you know, you have to rehearse past victories. In difficult moments, in difficult times, you cried unto the Lord, he heard you, and he came through for you. So wherever you find yourself, the same God who delivered you, the same God who helped you, is also about to take you to the next level. You must learn to rehearse your past victories. Should I close? Number four. Number four. Avoid negative environment and people. Listen, avoid negative environment. Negative environment and people. You must learn. Listen, when God gives you a word, when God speaks to you about something, when God gives you a promise, you must be careful where you go. You must be careful the people you listen to. You must be careful the environment you find yourself. You must hold on to what God has said. And to hold on with God, to what God has said, you must be careful the environment you spend yourself. Your, your, there are people who will tell you, it can never. I remember when I was a young boy in, in, in junior secondary school. I remember. And then people were getting some number of ones in our school. And then God told me the number of ones I was going to get. And then I remember one senior who got a certain ones. He asked me that from aggregate 6 to aggregate 15. What do you think you will get? I said, if I don't get 10 ones, I'll get 11 ones. He said, what do you mean? And he got angry and left. And I, I left him too. Listen, anytime God wants you to do something, there are people who are ready to tell you you are proud. There are people who are telling you you have an exaggerated opinion about yourself. I, I'm telling you, even when we were going to start Covenant Faith Chapel International, they're no mega evangelist. I was going to start. I was a medical student in my final year. And I remember some of my friends came to me and said, why am I going to start a ministry? Aren't there many ministries already that I should be part of? This is almost close to 20 years ago. It's past 20 years ago. And they said, ah, don't I have other ministries and their fellowships and their Christian medical fellowship, different fellowship that I can be part of. I can go and be one of the prayer warriors, executive members in the fellowship. Why am I starting a new thing? And now, is it that I'm proud? Is it that I want to do my own thing? Let me tell you, anytime you want to do something, anytime God puts something in your heart, there are people who have never done it before. They are only waiting to tell you why it will not work, how it will not work, why nobody has done it in your family before, why everybody who tried to do it, they failed and they fell. People are waiting for you to tell you this. They have told me many times, sometimes they say you are proud, sometimes you think, why don't you humble yourself? Why don't you do it? And then I will begin to ask myself what I'm doing did God really tell me and then you, you, you need to move away from such people you need to move away from negative people anything and anybody who says contrary to what God has shown to you and the promises God has made to you you must learn to stay away from such people even if an angel comes and tells you something different from what God has told you you must learn to stay away from it. They told me before I was starting church. They told, when I'm saying 50,000, there are people who are looking at it. They are telling me the way it's going, it doesn't look like this 50,000. It will be in our lifetime. Maybe our children will come and do 50,000. He said, who are thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become like a plane. The hand of Zerubbabel has become, and the hand of Zerubbabel shall bring it to completion. I didn't say 50,000. I didn't say over 5,000 churches. God himself said it. And so there are people all the time when God gives you a word. I am telling you, 
there are people who are waiting to tell you why it cannot happen, how it will not happen, and sometimes they will even tell you you are proud. They will tell you humble yourself. They will tell you are dreaming too much. They will tell you are thinking too big. Are you here with me? You don't know what I'm saying. You don't know. You know, many times people want you to settle for the status quo. Many times people want you to be ordinary. People don't want you to do extraordinary things, exploit. People want you to be to be subserv subservient and, and, and you should be you should be just low there. You should not even rise. Every time people want to make sure they are higher and better and doing greater than you. Anytime you have a vision to do better, they try to tell you, slow down, take your time, slow down, take your time, slow down, take your time. Who do you think you are? And that was what they told David. In first Samuel chapter 17, verse 28, David came and said, ah, What would the king do for the one who will kill this giant? And then his brother saw him. Eliab saw him and said, look at you. You brought your issues here again, eh? You see how proud you are? You think you are coming to watch this thing. You are bringing your nonsense here. Is that not it? Quickly, David moved away from him. There are people who can't see any good thing in you. There are people who can't believe any good thing in you. They think that if God will ever do something great, it should bypass you. You should never be part of it. So when God gives you away, let me tell you something. Even when you have visions and dreams, that is contrary to what God has told you. Discard it. Even when a prophet comes to tell you something and it's contrary to what God has put in your heart, throw it away. Are you here with me? If I, the apostle and the prophet, I come and I tell you something and God has not put that thing in your heart, throw it away. Throw it away. I say you should do what? Listen, I remember one day, Reverend Kenneth Higgins said, when he was praying for God to heal him from the sick bed, the devil told him, put your house in order for you shall surely die. The devil quoted the same scripture which Isaiah quoted to Hezekiah. Put your house in order for you shall surely die. So he was going to accept the word and the Holy Spirit told him, that is not my voice. There are many voices in this world. There are familiar spirits that are speaking. There are demonic spirits that are speaking. Even if you're a man of God, if you're not careful, demonic voices can speak to you. Like they spoke to Peter who told Jesus, you must not die. So listen carefully. You need to be rooted in the word. You need to believe in God's promises. I remember a story about a certain woman who was in her 50s, 60s, and then she was sick. And then the devil, a certain image appeared like an angel with shining light and said, put your house in order for you shall surely die. And then Reverend Kalegi said, no, God has said with long life he will satisfy us. He will show us our salvation. You can believe God to live longer. The woman was an evangelist who lived up to over 70 years because of the word. Now Hezekiah was a king and Isaiah the prophet told him, listen, put your house in order for you shall surely die. Hezekiah said, no, I don't want to die. He went to God and said, no, God, I want to live. I've been faithful. And God said, for he will not die. God added 15 years to his year. So when God tells you something in your heart, don't let what a prophet come to tell you. If it's contrary to what God has shown to you, me anything in your life. Don't let your own dreams, your visions, and don't say, say somebody saw me, I saw some image. Listen, throw it away. Any image, anything that comes, which is contrary to the word of God, throw it away. So if you want to hold fast to what you are believing, then you have to make sure you don't go to some places. Places where they speak negative things. People who speak negative things. People who say you can't do it. People who say you cannot become. They, every, they are complaining. They are memory. Stay away from them. Do not focus on the negative circumstances. Do not focus on the thing. You know, there are people who when they dream, every time they dream, they are in secondary school. When they dream, they are in kindergarten. When they dream, they are in JHS. Meanwhile, they are professors. Some people, when they dream, they are in their old family house. Every time they dream, they are in their old family house. Some people, when they dream, one day somebody, somebody said every time she goes, she doesn't finish the school. And that she, she, she doesn't finish the school. She sees her school uniform hang on a tree. Listen, there are some dreams you'll be having. Sometimes, some of you, when you dream, somebody comes to sleep with you, have sex with you. And then they, they say, if you sleep and they have sex with you, that means you are spiritually married. You'll never marry. If you believe in that interpretation, you will never marry. But if you tell yourself, if the Lord has set me free, I am free indeed. Listen, do not focus on contrary circumstances. Do not focus on the pattern and the report that runs through your family. You must tell yourself, I'm going to break this thing. I'm going to come out of it. Listen, you must not accept such reports. Every time you dream, you are in your old house. And they've told you that you are going backward in life. Every time you dream, you are wearing your JHS school uniform. That means you are repeating. You are writing exams. You don't finish the exams. Every time you dream, you are going to your hometown. You are serving idol. And then listen carefully. Christ has redeemed you from the curses of the law. 
The devil gives you dreams and images so that your faith will be in those things so that he will get a chance over you. Let God be true. Let any time you see those things, say, Yo, Satan, I do not focus on those things. I am in Christ. Show me. I will stop them in Jesus' name. I will stand upon the word. I will make sure I... Uh, listen, the devil is alive. Don't believe those things. Are you here with me at all? Why are you sad? It's okay. That's all you have believed all this year. So it's okay. Very soon you will be delivered. Are you here with me? If you have to fast and fast and pray. But you, that can, every time you dream, you are confused. You are mad. You are, ah, why? You are not mad. It's a, God, it's a, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. I refuse to be confused. I refuse to be mad. Use the word of God. And don't believe those things. Those things are just telling you the things the devil is planned and has, is planning about you. You better focus on what God is saying about you and what God has planned about you. Should I stop preaching? Ah. Even when you don't dream that you are going backward, you yourself, your life is showing you. You can see that and then, and then they want to show you a dream to come. Ah. Ah. Even if you've not, you've not dreamt you are, you are borrowing money, every day you are borrowing the physical, then you are adding dream to confirm it. And then you see, then you begin to believe in it. Then you give up in life. If, if you don't tell me, I can see that things are hard. So what are you telling me? Should I close? Let me close. Let me close. You don't like these things. You don't like these things. We have to change our way of thinking. Change the way we pray. Change the way we fast. We've been doing it the same old way. Nothing much has been happening. Are you here with me? I am who God says I am. I am a fruitful vine. I'm blessed of the Lord. My going out is blessed. My coming in is blessed. The number of my days I shall fulfill. Anything I see that is not of God, I will cancel it with the word of God. I will overcome it with the word of God. And I will not allow my faith to go into those things. Are you here with me? Let me finish. Associate with those who will inspire you and what you are believing. Don't, don't associate with just everybody. Associate with those who will believe, who, who, who will inspire you. They will believe in what you, they, they will inspire you. They will tell you it is possible, you can do it. Look chapter 1 verse 35 to 36. Look chapter 1 verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called Barry. So Mary went to meet Elizabeth. There are people who cannot inspire you. It's not everybody who can inspire you. It's not everybody who can identify with your story. It's not everybody who can inspire you. The angel said, your cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth has received a miracle. Elizabeth has received what men are saying is impossible. So what I'm about to do with you, you need to look for somebody to, who I have done similar in his life or her life. Somebody whose story can challenge you. Somebody whose testimony can inspire you. It's not everybody who can. If you have movie with people who are catching golden fish and they say you catch sharks. What can somebody catching golden fish? How can he inspire you? If you are moving with somebody whose daily prayer is God, give me, give me breakfast, give me lunch, give me supper, and you want to take a whole city for God, how can that person inspire you? Iron sharpened iron. So that's one man sharpening the countenance of the other. That is why sometimes we are not moving forward in life. We don't go to the right people to inspire us. We just move with anybody. Listen, he said, go to your cousin Elizabeth, who has now been has conceived in her old age. She has been con she's conceived. They said she was barren. They said she could not conceive in her old age. A woman barren she's conceived. When you go to Elizabeth you know that, listen, it is possible to conceive by the Holy Ghost. It is possible for the impossible to happen in your life. So you must move with the right kind of people. Don't just move with anybody. 
You want to believe things and you are moving with people who believe negatively. They don't believe the same thing. They don't believe God for exploit. No, you cannot. That is why our faith has been failing. That's why our faith has been getting tired. Because we don't, we don't rub our faith with people who also want to see exploit. Daily bread people. Daily bread faith. They are called people of little faith. They believe daily bread, daily bread, daily bread. Your benchmark is too low. Give me, bless me, bless my family, bless my children. That's what we know. We don't want to see exploit. We don't want to see souls coming to the kingdom. We don't want to see God transforming lives, touching lives. He said, go and meet Elizabeth. And then finally, learn to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Building up your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. 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 Let's be on our feet. Yes, I believe. Sing like you believe it. Sing yes, like you believe it. Believe. Sing it like you believe it. Sing it like you believe it. Goodness and mercies are following you. Favor is locating you. That all Money is coming to you. Money is coming to you. Yes, Money is multiplying in your hands. Sing it like you believe oh, it. Yes, I believe. The same place you were rejected, you are going back to that yes, same place. I believe. The same place they said you were good for nothing. The same family where they say no good thing comes from that family. Yes, you are going back to that family and the testimony will be changed, will be different. Sons and daughters are being born here. Favor is located you. Abundance is your portion. He anoints my head with fresh oil. My cup run it over, run it over. Fresh down, shake it together, running. Life is returning. Yes, I believe in that all We shall never be defeated. Oh, yes. You are too strong for your enemies. You are too strong for your enemies. You are too strong for your enemies. Fresh ideas. Fresh revelations. Yes, I believe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Unknown tongues. Speak it now. Speak yes. it now. Confess. I speak out. Speak out your blessing. Speak out your miracle. Yes. Speak out your favor. You are going over. You are making right decisions. Goodness and mercies are located. They are following you. Doors are opening yes. for you. Blessings. 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 Strength. Health. Long everything, abundance. God is filling this house with good things. With his treasures, testimonies are coming. Testimonies, testimonies, testimonies. Your own is part of it. Your own is part of it. Your package is being delivered now. Speak it out now. Speak it out now. The giant in you is rising. 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 You are recovering your lost territories. I'm recovering my lost territories. My prayer life is being stirred up. You are building houses. Owning properties. 